Happy New Year. Hello, hello. All right, hello and welcome to the new year and welcome to a new year with a new challenge. Welcome to Aloha 24 challenge and January. So for all of you who are new to the challenge, let me just explain really quickly what it's all about. So every month we'll have a theme that's connected to Hawaii and every week we'll have a prompt that fits the theme. So this month the theme is Ocean Animals of Hawaii and I chose animals that are um, quite common here and also a couple that you might not have heard from before. Um, this year we don't have a limited color palette so that's a bit different than last year and you can choose your colors just as you like. You can choose similar colors to what I choose or something totally different. This year I will also provide a tutorial every week. So this is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial over on Instagram and then we'll do a bunch of live streams here as well. And in between I might just record a video for you to watch. In general I just want to say that it's totally up to you how you interpret the prompt. So I don't want you to think that you have to paint, for example, this week's seal exactly like I did, even though I invite you to do that. You can just come up with something completely different and something of your own. All right, let me just quickly check the comments to see if everybody can hear me, everything's all right. Sound wise, audio wise, yeah, good, all right. Happy New Year, thank you, thank you. All right, so um, what else with the challenge? Oh, of course. So uh, mainly the challenge takes part over on Instagram. That's where I will also host the giveaway at the end of the month um, that you uh, can participate. So that's gonna be over on Instagram. And I'll also occasionally have some guest hosts. So it's not going to be like last year where we have a guest host every month, but I already have a few in line. So I'm excited for those months where we'll have a guest host. All right. So let me uh, turn around the camera and let's get started. I'm going to first talk about what supplies I'll be using and tell you a little bit about the monk seal. Okay, hold on. So it's gonna shake a little, you know, that process already. Hold on. I'm already, it's kind of It's kind of tricky to turn the camera around without pressing all the buttons. Okay. Here we go. I, I'm gonna take my, my hat off. Oh. Hi Sharon. Hi Rosie. Okay, almost there. Oops. All right. Mm, maybe a bit closer. Okay, as you can see, I have my old phone here so I can see your comments and then right down here is what we're gonna paint today which is this cute little monk seal and then I have my beautiful sketchbook that Denise sent me from Switzerland so her handle on Instagram is art moments and she made this herself it's one of those wonderful sketchbooks she made and I counted the pages and it's just gonna be perfect for this year's challenge so we're gonna start with the first page today. Let me just rub this out. This just said arches, which is the paper she used to make this book. All right. And I have, I just grabbed a bunch of brushes, nothing specific. When you look at what we paint today, 
we're going to be, you know, needing kind of like a medium brush to do the gray parts of the seal and then something kind of small for the eyes. And I'm going to use just a, a big round brush, mop brush for the background. So if you have those three, you know, tiny, medium and large brushes, you'll be you'll be fine. If you don't want to paint the eyes with a brush, you can just use uh, colored pencils. And for today, I'm actually only going to use one kind. So the Indigo, um, I have both a Polychromos here and a Carondage Luminance. I think for this one, I actually used the Luminance and you can see that it has a like a gritty texture, which I really love. If you don't want it to be so gritty, you can use, um, for example, a Polychromos that is a bit more fine. Okay, so I have my paper, I have my brushes, the colored pencil, and as for the colors, I made a little color chart down here. So I'm gonna use a yellow, and if you're wondering why, I just mixed this in with the gray to make it a bit more um, yellowish looking and to distinguish it from the rest of the monk seal. It really doesn't matter what kind of yellow you use. I mean, it's just for mixing. And the indigo. Oh, and one of my favorite colors is this light pastel turquoise. And then I need some gray. Of course, you can also use black and just dilute it. That would work too. Manta ray. So I'm currently making a color called Monk Seal. <laughs> I'm bringing this back to the store because I thought that would be a good opportunity to bring this back to the store. I think this is it. Just these four colors because this is the yellow and then this is the gray and you mix those two and you get this nice yellowish gray. This is the indigo and this is the diluted version of the indigo and this is the turquoise. All right. Oh, here's mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> toi, toi, toi. Ja, das, das ist super. Vielen Dank. Ich freue mich immer auf die Livestreams. I'm always looking forward to Livestreams with you guys. Ne? Klassentreffen. <laughs> mm, a sip of tea. I know that um, over in Germany it's already 8 o'clock at night. Over here it's around 9 o'clock in the morning right now. Okay. So let me put these to the side so they're not in the way. And next, I'm going to show you which reference photo I used. So if you checked my stories on Instagram yesterday, and you can still check the highlights, I stored the reference photos that I found for you to use in the highlights called Aloha 24 January. So this is pretty much one to one, the reference that I used, right? So I actually think this might be a young seal. Just, I mean, curiosity, first of all, this guy must have been very close to the camera. And also, you know, kind of like the, the color, the proportions, so really cute one. Whenever you draw anything, look, if you use a reference photo, just look at the shapes you can identify. So for this guy, right away, I can see the circle for the head and then kind of like an ellipse oval for the big, big snout here. <laughs> and then another circle for the body like this. And then you add some, you know, little flippers 
I think they're called flippers, flossum flippers here, kind of like little triangles. So honestly, I think as soon as you have those basic circles down and also, you know, the proportions, then you'll have a pretty easy time filling out the rest. But to get those proportions right, you really have to look at what you're, what you're drawing. And if you don't want to go straight to the painter you, uh, the paper you're painting on, you can just do a few thumbnails to kind of get the hang of it and find out about what you're drawing. So, for example, let's see. Let's do a few quick little thumbnails for this guy. So, the snout here is really in the foreground. So, we start with this ellipse. This is not going to be my final drawing. I'm just kind of demonstrating how you can go about finding the shape for this guy. And then we have this shape here on top, which is pretty much, you know, a circle if you would, or, yeah, elliptic circle. <laughs> if you were to paint it fully, and then you add the body down here. Like this. Once you have those circles, you can look back at your animal and then see, oh, actually, over here, it's a bit flat. And I think the snout is actually shaped that it has a high point here, goes down a little bit like this. So it's not a perfectly symmetrical ellipse. And then the head here, the rest of the head is actually, I think that's pretty accurate. And then you can just take your first drawing and just try one more time with the little changes that you noted after doing the first drawing. So, like this. And don't get frustrated if you don't get these shapes right. If it takes you 50 times to draw this and and you still, you know, you still don't feel really confident. Oh, does this even look anything like the animal I drew? Because it's... Um, this is, it's really a matter of practice, getting the proportions right for, for animals. And one of the reasons I chose this particular photo today is also <laughs> because of the fact that the seal is so close to the camera. I thought, I thought it looked kind of, you know, cute and goofy. The proportions are actually a bit dis, um, distorted, right? So if you don't get the shape perfectly, you know, like in the original, then it actually doesn't matter because this is not a very, um, this is a little bit of a distorted perspective anyways. Okay. And then what makes this seal really stand out as a seal are these hairs here, those whiskers. They're very thick. They have a lot and they're very pronounced. So I'm actually not going to add them to the illustration. I just wanted to point out that this is going to be very important for this animal. Otherwise, when you look at the regular shape of a seal, it's not that they have very highly distinguishable um, like color or patterns you know, it's not like painting a tiger with those very distinctive stripes or a giraffe with the long neck. 
Now this is pretty much all an accumulation of rainbow uh, raindrop shapes and, and circles and those animals are pretty gray. And that's also the other reason why I chose this picture because you know the face is so expressive in this one and then I really liked how the whiskers are kind of in the in the center here of attention too. And then look at this cute snout. I really like this picture. So the Hawaiian monk seal is one of its kind in the sense that this particular one uh, apparently only exists in Hawaii. However, there are monk seals all around the globe. They're just not this particular one. So it's not the Hawaiian monk seal. It's, for example, I don't know, the Caribbean monk seal, for example. But if you can draw this kind of seal, you know, you're going to be able to draw all sorts of animals that look like seals. All right. And I read a little bit about monk seals. So I think at this point, there aren't that many around anymore. Um, hold on. Where did my monk seal go? There it is. So um, they are on the um, endangered list of species. However, there is a place over on the island of Kauai in Poipu. And it's kind of like the turtle beaches we have here on the big island. Over there, they always have a whole bunch of these monk seals hanging around. And I mean, it's so funny. When they lie on the beach, they're just these cute... I mean, that's, you know... It's the life, right? <laughs> I mean, they just are so fast in the water. Absolutely elegant, incredibly fast. And they can do turns and twists. You probably have all seen um, videos of seals in the water. But as soon as they're on land, everything slows down. And here in Hawaii, I don't think I've ever seen a monk seal move. They're just, this is how you see them usually, I'd say, just sunbathing. Okay, let's go back to our reference photo. And I'm gonna set this to the side. Let me see, I don't think we need this illustration anymore right now. Okay. All right, first page on the sketch in the sketchbook. Very exciting. So I have a question for you guys. When you start a new sketchbook, what do you put on the first page? Or do you even start with the first page? Or do you start somewhere in the middle? Or like with the last page? So I usually, I just usually start with the first page. Um, sometimes, it depends a little bit. I can show you another little sketchbook that I'm working on right now. So for this tiny guy here, I just put a stamp on the first page. Just, it's kind of like the title of the sketchbook. And then, you know, just went ahead with, with the sketchbook. So, yeah, if you're not sure what to put on the first page, I can really recommend that maybe you can think about a title for your sketchbook. You know, it could be Florals or it could be Aloha 24 Challenge. And then put that on the first page. Or at least part of it. You could do a little banner and, and write that in. And maybe a tiny little doodle at the bottom and voila, your first page is already filled. So Kirsten usually leaves the first page blank and start at the second page. <laughs> Kata <laughs> leaves the first two pages blank. You mean like this one and well, a lot of sketchbook have these pre pages, don't they? The, um, the commercial sketchbooks. 
Let me just grab one here. I mean, something like this, right? Where, where you have uh, these kind of pages where, yeah, I don't paint or write on these pages either. But the thing is, using this beautiful handmade sketchbook that starts with the real paper right away, I kind of want to use that first page. Okay, so let's start. I'm not going to do the, the uh, sketch with my color pencil this time. So I'm just going to do it very lightly with pencil. I apologize if you can't see it properly. But I hope it helped that I explained how to go about finding the right shape for your sketch, utilizing the circles. And again, don't worry about getting all the proportions right for this one because our little baby monk seal is very curious today, twisting around in the water. So you could actually come up with a cute perspective for this guy. So in the photo, the, the flipper is actually cut off here at the bottom. So I'm just going to make up, you know, like a shape for the flipper down here. All right, and let me see. I want a little bit more here of the face. And then this is going to be the center, top center of the snout. It goes down like that. There's a very distinctive line here in the center. Then this is the mouth. So compared to my reference photo, the body here that I drew today is a bit larger, but that's totally fine. The only other thing I want to draw in is the placement of the eyes, because I find that that also makes a big difference. Placing the eyes in the right spots. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm looking back at your comments and Ike also says first page is blank. Melly's like first page all in. Woohoo! <laughs> all right, what's Sylvie saying? Big sore. Oh my gosh, yes. So Sylvie just said that she went to Big Sore, which is a part a beautiful part of California coastline. And Oh my gosh, do they have a lot of seals. I mean, it's just, uh, not just one, it's like hundreds. I remember I was there too a while ago. I am not sure if they are the same kind though. Do any of you know? I don't think these are monk seals, are they? They, they were very large. I mean, compared to the Hawaiian seal, the Hawaiian seals are kind of small. I was under the impression that in California, those those really, those were big buggers. <laughs> oh, and here come the dogs. Hello. And here they go again. Okay, that was a short visit. Hi, Molly. Malika. Aloha. Hi. Hi. Hello. Yo. Oh, oh, hello. Yeah, joy, joy. Okay. Ah, these dogs. My neighbor's dogs come over every day. That's so wonderful. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah, I just asked you about those seals in California. Elephant seals, right? That sounds big. 
I like the word elephant seal. That kind of like tells you what they are, right? <laughs> Amy says they're huge and loud. Well, Amy lives in California, so she must know. Harbor seals and elephant seals. Ooh, I don't think I've seen harbor seals. So they must be similar to the monk seals, I guess, if they're smaller and cute. <laughs> okay, all right, you guys. So for the drawing, if you um, if you want to just erase some of the lines, go ahead now. And you can also use one of these really cool kneaded erasers, you know, that one like um, that are knitable and just roll them over your drawing. And then this way you can make your pencil lines almost disappear. Alternatively, and something that I do more and more these days is you can use a water soluble colored pencil in a similar color to the color that you'll use later with your watercolor. And then it'll try to kind of like blend into your painting later. Okay, so we'll start with the snout. And for that, as I said before, we're gonna mix a nice yellowish brown, uh, gray, sorry. So I'm grabbing my gray paint it's so nice to have a gray do you guys have a have a gray as well or are you just watering down black I mean I know I could just water down black but I really like having a gray I actually like having different types of gray warm grays and cool grays just makes life so much easier for me when I paint like doing shadows okay this is a bit too yellow I don't want my monk seal to have little little plants and mosses grow on on his snout let's make this a bit more gray again and yes this is manta ray gray as I said, I'm currently working on bringing my other gray, which is a cool gray, back into the store. And that gray is actually called Monk Seal. So if you guys like grays and would like to have a warm gray and a cool gray, you can grab both Manta Ray and Monk Seal and then you'll have it all. Hi, Alina. Oh, it's done. Yay. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm always happy to see names pop up that I know from over on Instagram. You guys are the best. I really love having live streams with you guys. <laughs> it's so much fun for me. I mean, you know, it is a bit awkward, honestly, to just talk uh, by myself to myself. I mean, to you guys, but like I'm the only one talking, right? So... <laughs> That took a little bit getting used to. But because you're so active in the comments, I kind of feel like I am talking to you and you are communicating as well. So that's pretty cool. So Alina says she has a whole bunch of warm and cool grays and right isn't that just totally I mean very very useful to have I think okay I'm just mixing here forever <laughs> I don't know maybe I should just use a, a bigger coarser brush to get more paint out of my palette here all right we're gonna do this wet on dry starting with the snout and you don't have to leave out any space any white space i mean you can just cover the whole part of the snout with this nice very warm yellowish mix of gray so everything we're gonna do later will happen 
once this layer is dried and we'll pretty much paint over it so no need to leave any kind of white space or worry about um, not painting over certain areas so we'll leave this part I gotta mix more gray <laughs> So usually I try to not have to do what I'm doing now, mix more of the same color because it's very difficult to get it right. But because I managed to paint the whole snout in this color, I have this part done. So even if this gray that I mixed now is a bit different. It doesn't really matter because this is a, another part of the body and it's more in the background. So it has a little bit of a different shade anyways. But usually I would really advise you to try and mix enough of the paint If you, for example, want to paint a scene with very similar parts and the color changes significantly, you know, it'll look like it's just a different, it's supposed to be a different part of the painting. So for more unity in the parts that you're painting, I would always try to have enough of your mixed color ready. Okay, so the mouth area here, because that Dawn is asking, yeah, I left that because the next step will be to just use the plain gray without any other color mixed and painting the head, the mouth and the flippers. So for this one, I actually worked pretty closely with with that reference photo, which is usually not something that I do much, but I just adore this picture so much. So you can see the snout has this kind of yellowish greenish tint, and then the head and the flippers are a bit different. And then the mouth area is very dark. So we're just gonna use indigo for this part here. But again, um, if you want your purple uh, seal to be purple, then then go ahead. I'm I'm all for that. You know, I love my bright colors. <laughs> Hi, Mikey. Oh, everybody, send good energy to Mikey, please. She's in the hospital. Oh no. Yeah, I hope you get out of there soon. All my best to you, Mikey. All good aloha. Okay, let's go back to our painting. So I'm just gonna turn around and dry this real quick with my hair dryer. I'll be right back. I still have my number four round brush for this size of illustration and in the next step I'm just gonna grab my gray color straight from the pan. I will mix it up a little bit in the palette just with some water. You can use it straight out of the pan too but usually it's a bit more intense and I do want to work with a, you know, with a bit more lighter washes today. Okay, and then we're gonna paint the head part. And this time, I'm leaving white space for the eyes. 
Strictly speaking, it's not really necessary because we're going to go over the eyes with a very dark color later. But because I want to leave some white highlight here, I'm going to try and leave that white space for the eyes. And if you accidentally paint over the eyes, don't worry, you can just use the indigo later to paint the eyes in, and then just some white jelly roll pen or gouache to add the highlight. Okay, I know that it doesn't make a lot of difference, you know, these types of gray that I'm using, but I do feel when you look at the finished painting, that there is a subtle difference. And I really like that. It's kind of like skipping the step where you have to worry about where to put the shadows exactly. Just by using different types of gray, it almost kind of creates the feeling of shadows. So we are already four days into the new year. And if you guys have watched my stories over on Instagram, you know that I have been for the first time ever choosing, I have chosen a word for this year, kind of like a, a guiding word that um, shall help me make my creative decisions this year. So I would be very curious if you have a word of the year or if you have maybe even a list <laughs> of things like a bucket list, things you want to do this year. Yeah, so do you guys do that or do you try to not do that so you don't get disappointed in case you can't make it? <laughs> Okay, all right, and let's see. So my word for this year, and I thought about this for a long time and I had different candidates, but I noticed in the last years that I'm really feeling more and more strongly that I would like to try out a few more or not a few, maybe a couple new areas of art. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love watercolors, but it's it's really something where I'm where I'd be very curious. So I chose diversify for this year. It's not only because I want to try out new stuff. It's also that I want to try and not just do, let's say, not just do like one social media, you know, not just do like Instagram or just Instagram, because we never know what's going to happen to our social media platforms. So I'm just going to look around and see what else I can do, for example, here on YouTube without, of course, burning out. I think it's always a really kind of like a tricky balance that you have to find in order not to overexert yourself trying to make content for too many things. I'm also going to look into creating a membership. But as I also mentioned over on Instagram, I don't really feel like I have the capacity right now. But it's definitely something I would like to look into. Okay, just a quick word on my painting here. I started to fill the space with indigo while my 
gray is still a bit moist. Now, if it's too wet, you should wait a little bit because otherwise your indigo will just explode into the gray. So you have to make sure that the gray is just a, just a little bit moist and this will help you to create a nice blend here in between the indigo and the gray. In case you added the indigo and it just fireworked into your gray, just clean your brush and dry it and just kind of wipe up the indigo and push it back towards the dark side. <laughs> Go back to the dark side. And just repeat until you cleaned up that area. If it's too risky, you can just wait until the gray is dry, then add the indigo, and then with a clean, moist brush, just rub a little bit until you blend those two colors here in the center. All right, so Mikey's word is try. That's a good one, because that's all we can do, right? We can try, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it won't. But if your word is try, then at least, you know, when you do try, you already accomplished something. I like it because it's more focused on the process than on the goal. So as a tip, if you want to maybe choose your word for this year, this is really something that I can recommend that you look more to the process, to the way and not to the end goal. So rather than, for example, I'm going to do, I don't know, this could be pretty much true for, for any part of your life, you know, instead of saying, Mm, I don't know, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. You know, you could do something like, I'm going to eat more healthy. Uh, I'm going to go and walk more. That's much easier to accomplish, I think. And if you lose a few pounds on the way, then it's better. And as for painting or being creative, I mean, I know that a lot of people say, you know, I'm going to paint every day and all that. And that's that's great. But I think... Whenever you don't get to paint that day, you're just going to feel sad. So I think I would, I would like put it more in a positive context. Like, for example, I'm going to try new media this year, make it a bit more general. You know, I'm going to paint more with watercolor and color pencils. Something like that. I think I personally would just have it a little more vague even though I per I personally I like lists and <laughs> you know doing like I'm gonna do one tutorial per week and then all this but it does it does add a lot of pressure to get things accomplished when you think this way So let me know what you think about this. If you have New Year's resolutions, do you, do you tend and have very specific ones? Or do you keep it more, you know, more general? Yeah, I've been thinking about this quite a bit in the last couple of weeks. So I'm, re I'm actually really interested in how other people do it because, of course, I'm always very happy to learn and adopt certain techniques or certain ways. Because we're all just trying to find a balance, aren't we? The balance in life and the balance in work or you know in our creative life creative work
Okay, so back to the painting. I added a very light wash of indigo to the flippers here. And my gray is at this point really almost dry. So it did blend a little bit with the gray. But for this part here, I really recommend that you wait until your gray is dry. Then I'm just going to add a little, little bit of a shadow here on this side with my indigo, cleaning my brush and just blending it in with the rest. All right. Okay, and with a very light wash of indigo, I'm going to now add some details to the snout. So first of all, we have this line here in the center. Then these cute holes for the little nose up here. Okay, looking over at your comments, Julia said, I don't make any new year resolutions. And that's probably even better. Right. Next step here with a very light wash of indigo, very diluted indigo. I'm just painting in those spots, indicating where the whiskers are located. Try to get these at an angle following the direction of this part of the snout. So for this side, you start here in the center and then diagonally go down. And then for the other side, start in the center and then just diagonally go down to the other side. And try to not get them, mm, try to make them not too symmetrical. So in itself, I mean, just blobs in different sizes and different shapes. Like this. So this looks pretty wild right now. But once you add the whiskers, it's just gonna all make much more sense. Okay, I'm looking over at the comments again, and Sylvie says, I stopped making, or I stopped New Year's resolutions a while ago. I try to be calm, take day by day, step by step, and try to do my best. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is how we should do it all year round. And you know, come to think of it, isn't it also, I mean, of course, this is a new year and, and we have a new number for the new year, but it is just month by month and year and, and day by day. And, and look to, for example, the, the Chinese, they start their new year sometime in January or end of January or February, you know, because they have another way of uh, counting the days looking to the moon. So when you think of it, it's everything so fluid. Having those those years and months, I mean, this is kind of like a construct of ours. But yeah, I like what you said, Sylvie. I think this is really the best we can do. I still like planning. I can't help it. <laughs> I'm such a planner. You know, I already have that whole year for this challenge planned and all the themes and prompts and everything. However, I know, of course, that things might change as they always do. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is that I'm just adding a little more indigo here to the mouth area because I would like it to be a bit darker. 
I'm mixing more indigo with water on my palette. This indigo, this is a synthetic indigo. It's a very strong. It has a very strong tinting strength. So I'd rather water it down too much and add another layer than painting straight in my painting with this really dark indigo because it's just going to look like black. And I'm dropping in some more indigo here to indicate a shadow. And also over here in the other flipper. Okay, I'm looking over at the comments. Oh, okay, things are happening. So Mikey now chooses positive words that make her feel like she can do more things. Yes. Alina never made New Year's resolutions. But for creative life, um, she made more general plans. Right? If you make it too specific, it's just going to be super stressful. Yeah, that's how I feel too. I mean, for my for my private creative art life, I do have to say for the for the business side, I kind of like having a plan. It it's a bit it comforts me, <laughs> you know, to have the prompts already ready and the months all um, the themes for the months already planned, so to speak, and maybe a general idea of what I'll post when on which social media platform but for my own creative process my own work yeah I like to keep it a bit more loose and general for sure <laughs> okay Don just said her seal is really wonky but it's still so darn cute yeah, right? That's what I loved about this reference photo. It can be super wonky, but it's still gonna be so cute. You could actually paint other animals in this perspective too. I mean, even cats or dogs. You know, they put their, their nose close to the camera. They're all gonna look like this. Okay, so Sylvie just says that her friend told her that phrase, shikata ganai, or actually um, my mom and I usually say shoganai. It is what it is. <laughs> Sylvie, I like that your friend from Taiwan speaks Japanese. That's amazing. Okay, so let's go back to my painting. So you can just drop in more and more indigo in those spaces and places that you'd like to have a bit, that you like to be a bit darker. And for this, you can look at the reference photo again. And I have to say, working with contrast is something that really, I mean, for me, um, is something that I didn't do in the past. I just wasn't really um, brave enough to, to add shadows. I always thought it's just going to be too much. But I do this more and more, and I really have to say it makes a big difference. Okay. But I think this is enough. This is now really very, this is a lot of contrast, so I think that's, that's enough. 
Let's move to the eyes. For the eyes, I'm actually going to use a fairly opaque mixture of indigo. So I'm not going to water it down. And I'm going to also switch to a really small brush. Okay, I mean, actually, for this one, you could even use the paint straight out of the pan. And for this step, really make sure that your gray is dry, the gray of the head area here. Otherwise, you'll have indigo disaster fireworks. Okay, let me get closer. So for the eye, we'll do kind of like almost like a diamond, diamond elliptic shape and leave out a little bit of white here. If this is too fiddly for you guys, you don't want to work with a brush for this part. This could also be, um, a colored pencil could also be really good for this part. Or you could even use just a pen, a jelly roll pen, or something of that sort. Okay, here we go. Let's add a little eyebrow on this side as well. I know they don't have eyebrows. It's more like a Mm, like that there's more, I don't know how to say that, <laughs> it's a bit raised, a raised part of the part over the eye. Okay, and I'm just going to go around and look around a little bit, maybe add a little bit more of a very light indigo wash in those areas where it's dry to the point where you can hardly see any of the indigo anymore. I want it to be a, oops, that was too much water. A bit darker here in this part. Okay. So I see here that I left a white part on it. That was not intentionally. I don't mind actually. And honestly, I think as soon as I add the whiskers, it's not gonna be relevant. But if you have a little spot somewhere that's still white, you can wet your brush and just rub over this part a little bit and move the pigments around. And if you still have some of that color mix that you made, you can just drop that in and cover up that spot. The only disadvantage is that mm, it's very likely that you might get some dry edges here. So if you really want it to blend in perfectly, you'd actually have to kind of paint over the whole part here one more time, very lightly with just using a tiny bit of water. Kind of like this. See, you just take your brush very gently and very lightly. Distribute the pigment all over the whole area one more time. And if you end up getting a few holes in that area, you can let it dry and then just paint over it one more time with the same color and another very thin layer. So I always recommend, you know, for watercolors, let them do their thing. And if there's a tiny little mistake, I would usually recommend don't bother with it. Just, you know, just leave it if it's not too bad, if it doesn't give you a headache. Because oftentimes trying to fix things will lead to um, more headaches, so to speak. 
but I just wanted to show you how you can try to do it if you if you wanted to. Okay, so let's zoom out a little bit again. There are pretty much two more steps to our seal today. So I want to add the whiskers and a few more details and a bit of texture with my with my indigo color pencil. And um, the reason why I chose two today is because this is a rough paper with a lot of texture. And I was kind of curious to see how these work on this kind of paper and if they will look different. I think they will, but let's try this out. And then I'm going to... Um, add this turquoise background here as well. So because I'm using regular color pencil, both of these are not water soluble. It doesn't actually matter if I do the background first or the color pencil, but in my experience, if you want the color pencil on top and if you want that look of it being on on top of all the other colors, like top layer, you should do the background first. Because for some reason, painting over color pencil with watercolors, it will look a little bit different. And if you, like me, accidentally choose a water soluble color pencil, thinking it's not a <laughs> water soluble pencil, then you'll have lots of blends going on. Yep, true story, that has happened to me. So just make sure <laughs> before you choose your color pencil that you choose the right one. Okay, let me just erase this little color um, pencil line here. <laughs> and over here as well. Okay, this is one of my favorite erasers. It's a Tombow Mono Zero. It has this cool mechanism, you know, like a mechanical pencil and a super fine eraser. It's just really great for detailed and small drawings. All right, so let's do the background first. And to make sure that this part that I just painted is dry, I'm gonna go and use the hair dryer. I'll be right back. Oh, and I wanted to show you. So you can see that I messed with this area here, right? There are these little striations here. So I really don't mind, it's, it's fine. But that's why I said before, sometimes when you try to fix so-called mistakes with watercolor, you, you know, you'll end up getting <laughs> another kind of effect that maybe you like even less. But if something like this happens to you and you really can't stand the look of it, as I said before, just paint over it. But you have to make sure you cover the whole area again. Okay, let's do the background. I'm gonna use my big mop brush for that. And the reason why I love this particular brush so much is that it has such a pointy tip. This is actually a German brush from Brusna, which is a huge art supply store in Germany. And 
there are so many advantages to these kind of quill or mop brushes. They hold an incredible amount of water, like a mop. <laughs> and when they're well made, then they usually also have a really pointy and fine tip. And you can use the full side of the brush belly to make big strokes, but then you can also use the tip for really fine lines. So honestly, for a lot of my paintings, I use just one brush, one mop brush to do pretty much everything, especially for the more loose artwork that I love to do. I often don't even switch between brushes. Okay, I'm looking over at your comments and Julia just, Julia just said that she can't use air dryer for her pictures. Oh, okay. Mm. Then you have to wait. <laughs> um, yeah, I also always recommend that if your paint is still very wet, don't use the hair dryer. You'll just splatter all the paint around. And that's happened to me too. And if for, you know, another reason, like you can't, you know, it's too loud to use a hairdryer or maybe your sketchbook is too sensitive, you know, for whatever reason you can't use the hairdryer. You can also go ahead and just pull out another piece of paper and maybe just do some doodles or paint something abstract to make tags out of it later. So... I know for a fact that some watercolor artists actually paint several pictures or paintings at the same time. Not at the same time, but you know, they switch between paintings. Yeah, there are so many ways to work around having to wait for the paint to dry. I have so many little hairs today. This must be the, the dogs. I swear it's like little, little tiny, tiny dog hairs all over. Okay, so for the background, you can either do this wet on dry, like I'm doing here, for a very intense background. But you have to work pretty quickly so you don't get drying edges and it looks very homogeneous and smooth. If you don't want to work that quickly, you can also lay down a layer of water first and then just drop in your background color. You can also drop in, first paint everything with water if you want kind of a lighter background wash. over at the comments again. So Susan says, I like the variation in watercolor. It's the nature of the technique and gives it original character. Yeah, right? I mean, this is really true for watercolor. I mean, if I'm looking for a more evened out finish, more opaque, you know, no variations, then I would just choose gouache or acrylic. With watercolor, you actually never really know what's going to happen, right? So many things, so many interesting things happen when you just let watercolor do its thing.
<laughs> okay, and my mom, oh, she's she's talking about shikata ga nai and choga nai. Yeah, that's Japanese, right. <laughs> it's funny, the examples she gives. Like she's saying, okay, we couldn't find a taxi, and now we have to walk. Shogunai. No, can't change it. Dakawanixmahang. <laughs> well, that is that is a way to explain what it means. I think Selvi meant it in a more mm, in a more yeah, positive way though, right? Like take things as they come. All right, and then, oh, and the name of this turquoise color is Ice Queen, and I didn't print it on the side of my pan. Ay, ay, ay. Ice Queen. <laughs> and Kata wants to know when I'm going to make a book. Oh, thank you. That's like, wow, so nice. That's such a nice compliment. Thank you. Well, what kind of book should I make? What do you guys think? If I made a book, I think I wanted it to be crazy, cool, fun. Do you guys remember when I did this um, sketchbook with Aloha story phase last year when I had the... How is it called? This cool book with a challenge, uh, with a color palette. And um, I never knew what kind of theme would come up. It was like a, a book with, I think, 100 different painting and drawing challenges. So there was always a, a limited color palette um, and a theme by Jennifer Orkin Lewis. Gosh, I love that so much. And I thought this book was so, so, so inspiring. Yeah, so I was actually thinking about doing something like this. You know, challenge people with fun, quirky, interesting prompts. And you know how much I love limited color palettes. So yeah, I could totally think about maybe doing something like this. Melly says, maybe a mixed media book. Yeah, oh, I love mixed media. <laughs> oh, thanks, Kata. She liked our Christmas calendar, the one I made with um, Miss Nice Day with Tanya. Yeah, that was, that was such a great project. Actually, the, the Christmas calendar let me to come back to my step-by-step -step tutorial theme for this year's challenge. Because I, I really enjoy making these little tiny step-by-step -step tutorials. So, um, so for all you guys, I can tell you that I am actually planning to put all of my step-by-step -step tutorials, also the ones I made two years ago, I already have almost 60 of these, together into a digital workbook and then everybody who's on my email list will receive the workbook but yeah as always it takes <laughs> it takes longer than anticipated to pull that together i mean already you can just go to my website and see all the tutorials listed there but i thought it might be nice to have them all in one place let me just quickly show you so that in case you haven't seen that yet, I can just show you. So when you go to alohawatercolors.com, tutorials, I have all of my step-by-step -step tutorials here on my website. And then when you um, click on one of the themes, the, the tutorials come up. So, I mean, they're already all there, pretty much in one space. But I thought, yeah, just putting them, pulling them together in a 
big PDF with maybe some tips on, you know, some explanations about the techniques. Because, you know, the problem is always with these tutorials that I have to be really short. I can't really explain much about certain techniques. So, yeah, I mean, it's coming at some point. <laughs> Okay, let's go back to our little monk seal pup. And all we need to do now is to add the whiskers. <sighs> that was another dog hair. I'm just reading your comments. You guys are so sweet. Dawn says, your book should be a combination of everything, lettering, watercolor, creativity, hospitality, coffee, <laughs> all the positive energy. I like that. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. See, that's, that's totally down my alley like a, a combo of everything. But then it's always a bit risky that it's just a bit too much, maybe, right? Hmm, yeah, I'll think about it. So, as I said, I'm trying two different colored pencils. I'm trying this one first. This is the Carondage Luminance Dark Indigo. It's one of my favorites. I use this a lot for outlines, for shadows. I prefer to not use pure black in pretty much all of my drawings and paintings. So I'd rather use indigo or a dark Prussian blue. So when you paint those or draw these whiskers, make sure that they are curved. So don't do them straight because otherwise you'll have a, a little kitty, <laughs> a kitty seal. And they are actually fairly long, so no fear, you can really go wild on these. All right, and for the other side, let me try out the polychromos indigo, see if there's any difference. Hmm. Looks very similar. I think it's a bit more fine. The line looks a bit more fine. There's less texture. I'll show you up close. See over here, this is the luminance. You can see the texture here. Very nice, I like that. And this is the polychromos over on this side. It's much finer. So for me personally, I love the textured effect. So I'm going to continue with my luminance over here and I'm doing very fast, quick strokes. And I know this can be quite intimidating. You know, you might feel like you're gonna ruin your, your painting. So always feel free to practice these strokes first on a separate piece of paper. Just to, you know, to get this motion down and move your paper. Because there's always a direction where it's easier to make lines of any kind. Once you have a few down, just take a break and, and look at it. And of course, you know, now I can see that I went all in on this side and they are much longer than on this side. So gonna add a few maybe two or three really long ones on this side hmm like this I think my my turquoise paint see it's still moist over here because see how the how the color pencil blended in very interesting over here you can see the watercolor paint was already completely dry have a lot more texture such a difference so interesting okay yeah. 
And here we go. So, all right, I'm gonna grab my date stamp. And let's see, today, ooh, cool. New Year, 2024, December. Let's go to January and zero four. It's always so satisfying for me to put date stamps. I, re I really like this part. I love sharpening my color pencils and I love stamping the date. <laughs> okay, um, which color? Oh, how about teal? So because this is such coarse, rough paper, Gotta make sure I press down really hard on this one. Okay, let's do it this way around. Okay, here we go. add the title of the challenge somewhere how about I do this Ooh, I could do this in pink mm, let's see oh my gosh this is pink <laughs> well I committed now 24 I always have to make a little pause in the new year, so I don't accidentally write 23. Here we go. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay. Arrange this a little bit. All right. Mm. Alina says, I would have made an excellent postal office clerk. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, I should probably look into that business because I know everything about shipping now. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> okay, hold on, guys. Let me quickly turn the camera around one more time. So I can wish you all... A wonderful week here we go I hope you had fun and enjoyed today's painting of this little guy and for next week where is it? here we're gonna do a seahorse and there is one seahorse type in Hawaii the smooth seahorse um, it's very yellow, it's very interesting, it's very rare, so I've never seen one. Um, but I thought that would be an interesting animal to paint. There are a few tricks to get the shape right. I'm at this point not sure if I'm going to do a live stream for this one or um, just a pre-recorded video, but I'll let you know ASAP. I'll send out a newsletter and of course I'll announce it over on Instagram too. All right. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for commenting too. That makes everything so much better. And I wish you a great rest of your week. Happy New Year. And aloha. Bye.